Anyway, uh, we're back now in part, I, I don't know what, right? So the previous part, I was speaking about how by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. He takes our burdens upon his back. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. And he is the setter freer yeah, of those who are in the occult and the taboo and the, um, what is this? The shame of occult activity and what the people who practice it um, engage in is redeemed, you know, by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. You come out on the other side, only able to walk on air do you understand light on your feet do you become despite having been heavied by for whatever you wanted to get like people must turn to jesus anyway so uh this oki then that i was talking about his like that, that got the job via some occult means ended up so he sacrificed his soul to the devil and that was just the beginning of birth pains if we were to use biblical like language now okay those were the beginning of his sorrows the first job that he got using satan now the devil when he like as soon as you consult his and you get something out of les angom obviously guys you get indwelt by some entity by some a hostile entity what do you want with us we are many we are legion however many of them come inside you you get indwelt by dark spirits and now that they are they have taken control of um zimbawako uh they they whisper sweet nothings into your ear they change the course of your life they decide where you're gonna go what you're gonna do next they decide what you're gonna consume and you also get seared to a certain extent in your conscience you then have stripped away from you um the glory of god's visibility in your heart in the sense that you have a conscience and so so you don't just treat the person that you envy with hostility. You don't just slap the girl in the office that is pretty. You don't just dripa the girl in school that does better netball than you. You don't just sabotage the project of the lady in your university that is, um, you know, in your class or whatever, in your lecture hall or whatever. You exercise self-control. You brittle that. Even outside of Christ, people have a, a, a God-given ability to brittle certain ludicrous acts. It is only those that are called sociopaths, psychopaths, and uh, basically uh, like mentally ill people that tend to just run with their passions inside them a lot of us thanks to the common grace of God have common decency just basic decency to not outwork our deepest desires against people in the environment but when you have dabbled with sorcery that common decency flees out the window you basically get reduced down to the level of operating within the ID the ID so you're probably wondering what are you talking about but let me use this analogy a little bit, right? Uh, Freud has got the psychosocial stages of childhood development. No, not psychosocial stages of childhood development, sorry, but a theory of the psyche. I use Freud a lot in this regard because, guys, when it comes to psychology or the study of the mind, I don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Do you understand what I'm saying? Due to the fact that man, it is appointed unto man, for, sorry, God, uh, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the glory of kings or man is to search it out. And so people, upon interrogating the things of God, it is also written in God's word that man is born um, desiring, not so much desiring God, because we're actually rather born uh, at enmity with God, but man is, is born with eternity on their hearts. So they understand that there is some supernatural plane that we need to be restored back to. However, sadly, they go and they find it in the new age, the occult, etc., instead of in the one true way. But that's why we're here, right? To evangelize the living daylights out of you, help you find that right road um, type establishment thing, right? So because we are born inherently just desirous of supernatural activity because we are spirit beings in and of ourselves uh we then um what is this they search stuff out we try and figure out the consciousness of humanity the psyche you know that mystery that i spoke about in the earlier parts in ecclesiastes of how it is that a soul or life or personality is driven into a baby you can understand the biological process in producing the baby but you can't get how they have a thriving personality a living soul afterwards type establishment thing while well, the study of that our consciousness this thing that makes us unique as people one after the other every eight every last eight billion one of us has something unique a stamp of on them a fingerprint that is unique to them and that is something that has been the grand curiosity of man as to the origins of it therefore mankind has innovated all different kinds of uh, a a academic disciplines to explain what is going on that's why Maslow came up with the hierarchy of needs that is why um, Freud came up with all of his theories basically psychologists you know the psychosocial stages of childhood development um, humanism tried like all of these uh, uh, theorists uh, all over the world um, that keep on 
coming with different arguments or changing up what has historically been already kind of uh, theorized that's why even theoretical physics is a thing a very respected science it is because we have yet to unravel all the truth that we need to but we are thirsty and hungry for it why because we are born with eternity in our hearts it's even the reason why they are able, even building that hadron collider there in switzerland um cern is it spain yeah so they have, like yeah that curiosity they have gone on some array shape and a building a vortex into the cosmos that's going to destroy the human race but they are doing it because of that inherent desire for eternity in our hearts it's just that a lot of people if anything i would go so far as to say most people since broad is the road that leads to destruction uh go the wrong direction in finding out what's going on with us um so therefore i do not write off psychology the study the discipline when mankind digs into what's going on i take what their learnings and their findings with a pinch of salt and uh and then apply scripture to it to try and kind of come up with my own little baby and throw away the bath water so i um what is this use freud's uh theory of the psyche a lot in my explanations of what in the world happens with the man's depravity and how they find themselves just acting a fool especially when they find out about supernatural means to manipulate our current ecosystem time space and matter okay so this theory of the psyche is made up of three parts the id the ego and the super ego the id is basically let's just use a baby uh the id is your identity the thing that is very uh basic baseline your pr primitive uh, needs you know when you've got air in your lungs you just burp when you've got urine in your bladder you just urinate like right there on the spot no need to go and bring down a panty sit on a toilet seat when you are hungry you just want to eat 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 and if at all you're not getting your food you're just gonna cry about it you are operating in your basic instincts so you're like a baby basically Mwah! when you're hungry Mwah! when you pee you poop and you pee in your pants no self-control and then the ego takes over the ego is self-explanatory literally it's the thing that makes you look at yourself on some i would never go out like that so children get potty trained and in their potty training that's when they are establishing their ego what it is that you would never ever do because it's just an uncouth oh my goodness so therefore you put down your pants to pee you don't just pee right there in your pants so therefore children develop around a uh, potty training age the the, uh, the, the 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 ego the thing that looks out for how in the world under heaven do i feel about this deed um and my ego how is it going to feel when i just vomit right on my chest it's not okay so i'm gonna run to the toilet and vomit in there because that's more decorous that's the ego okay and then there is the super ego the super ego takes into consideration morality it takes into consideration the eyes of the human race so what will people think if i do a particular thing the super ego regulates societal um like legislation a lot of times you know uh how do we act in front of other people now the ego is not sufficient to regulate you and how in the world under heaven it is that you operate because for instance men who just whip out their manhood and pee on the side of the street and so far as nobody's looking that is the ego in operation in the sense that they would never pee in their own pants but they certainly do it in public however you would not just go and whip out your manhood in front of a whole bunch of people what regulates the fact that you go to a toilet or and use a urinal is the super ego you concern over what society is going to think about you now witchcraft is the thing that takes the super ego out of the way it takes the human beings concern for what society thinks away it gives them a veil of anonymity do you understand what i'm saying it makes them uh feel as if though nobody can see me so and so far as i can keep my ego intact i wouldn't do certain things in public i mean come on but i can do them under wraps we have been by the common grace of our amazing god brittled random murder every day in your house a mother does not upon being upset with her child just you know grab a knife and stab that kid uh you don't just sleep with your best friend's boyfriend that you find cute something tells you mm, this is not all right this is not all right but insofar as you ain't gonna get caught what are you gonna do you're gonna do it anyway let me move on to the next